Thank you for inviting me to speak with you today. The conversation about ethics is important, and we are happy to be a part of it. 20 years ago, two graduate students came together with the goal of organizing the world's information for everyone. They were convinced that knowledge is empowering and that a society with more information is better off than one with less. Today, that mission still drives everything we do at Google. Our products now serve billions of people, and they work the same way for everyone, whether you're a professor at the Sorbonne or a student in rural India. It's clear technology can be a positive force in our lives. It has the potential to give us back time and extend opportunity to people all over the world. But it's equally clear that we need to be responsible in how we use technology. We want to make sound choices and build products that benefit society. That's why earlier this year, we worked with our employees to develop a set of AI principles that clearly state what types of technology applications we will pursue. And it's why we have created a set of digital well-being tools across products to help people disconnect from technology when they want to. User trust is the foundation for everything we do and privacy and security are fundamental tenets of that. We've been working for years to provide more transparency and control for our users. And we appreciate the input and partnership from data protection authorities and everyone in this room. But our work on privacy and security is never done. Privacy is an individual right that we must continue to work together to uphold. Today, there is real momentum to develop rules for data production around the world. We welcome this trend. Earlier this year, we proposed a legislative framework for privacy and data production. It builds on much of the good work behind GDPR and would extend many of its principles to users in other parts of the world. Legislation is a good start, but it's not enough. Getting privacy right requires careful consideration of the hard issues that come up every day. So even as we advocate for comprehensive privacy principles, we are also taking a close look at our own products and practices. And we are asking ourselves tough questions about how we can improve them, because we know we have more to learn. For example, we recently conducted a wholesale audit of our APIs the interfaces that let our services operate with others. We proactively studied our platforms and looked for vulnerabilities. We identified four areas where we need to improve, and we committed to four strong actions focused on making the understandings between users and developers more explicit, providing more granular controls and limiting information sharing. Underlying all these actions is the belief that our users should control what happens to their information and that companies should help them avoid unintended consequences and unwanted results. It's a simple concept worth preserving even as technology and the world around us becomes more complex. Kent Walker, who heads our global affairs, is with you today to share more about Google's approach to ethics and privacy. We look forward to continuing to engage on these important topics. With that, I'll turn it over to Kent. Thank you very much for the opportunity to join the conference and, and address you today. We very much appreciate the work of data protection regulators, and we appreciate the opportunity we've had over the years to have met with many of you in this room. Sundar just spoke about the benefits of technology and how we think about the task of developing new technologies in ways that are sound and socially responsible. Our vision is anchored in three key principles. Number one, building for everyone, for all of humanity. Number two, having high standards of privacy for everyone. And number three, creating responsible frameworks for the ethical development of new technologies that deliver benefits for everyone in society. Let me start with my first point, building for everyone, which is itself an ethical choice. For 20 years, our flagship products have been free 
with advertising as our main source of revenue. We build products for everyone regardless of their economic circumstances, what kind of connectivity they have, or what devices they use. By showing relevant and useful ads, we can deliver search for people of all income levels, everyone in the, everywhere in the world, for free. Just like search and maps, much of, what we, much of the content we enjoy every day online, from free apps to independent media to services offered by small businesses, is supported by advertising. We're convinced that we can make products and services widely available while simultaneously setting a high standard for transparency, control, and security for our users around the world. As people use our products, we receive their feedback on what works for them, and this enables both customization and the collective improvement of the services that we all have come to take for granted. And it's worth remembering the results of that open and dynamic exchange. We've seen a larger, more, divor more diverse, and more inclusive digital economy where individuals can get rich content, new products, and wider access to knowledge. Small businesses can find customers around the world, and new and old generations of publishers and content creators and artists can reach new audiences. It's a world where anyone, anyone with a good idea and an internet connection can scale up and reach and enter the digital economy. But the open web and services funded by digital advertising are facing new questions. We recognize that. If people lose trust in the open web as we know it today, they may not search for answers tomorrow. Protecting users and promoting trust isn't just a compliance imperative. It's not just uh, an economic imperative. It's an essential part of our mission. So let me turn to my second point. Combining this vision of technological progress with high standards of privacy for everyone. We believe it's possible to build high quality products with strong privacy protections and to make them available to all parts of society all around the world. One of our oldest guiding principles at Google is if you focus on the user, all else will follow. That means that we always strive to build the most useful tools for our users, saving people time, making them more productive, giving them new, product, new, new choices. Aggregate data helps us to improve the quality of many products. For example, by providing better information about waiting times at your favorite restaurant or helping you avoid traffic on your way home. Focusing on the user also means protecting our users by building privacy and security into our products. Everyone has a right to privacy, and we are committed to complying with legal requirements around the world, but also to respecting local values and context as we do so. Beyond that, we want every product we, we build to live up to the expectations of our users. As we often hear from, from Giovanni and from others, this is a responsibility that goes beyond technical legal compliance. It's not a, a, a trivial goal or a box-checking exercise. Serving everyone means getting, means getting privacy right across cultures, across legal systems, across ages, even across personalities. It's challenging. Some have said even impossible. But I believe, we believe, that inclusiveness and privacy are profoundly compatible. We, of course, don't have all the answers, but we are tackling the challenge in the best way we know how, through product excellence and by making privacy work in practice. We have invested an enormous amount of work over the past few years, perhaps more than any other company, to bring security, transparency, and control to our users. We aim to put the same ingenuity and resources that we put into Google Search into privacy controls that work for everyone. And I think it's fair to say that we've delivered on that promise. Take our data portability tools, which we launched a decade ago. Data portability gives people choice in the services that they use. We were the first company to let you take your data with you. 
Earlier this year, jointly with other companies, we announced the Data Transfer Project, an open source tool that we developed jointly to help you move data directly and securely between service providers. Or look at Google Account, a service we rolled out in 2015 and have been improving ever since. It's a comprehensive set of tools that lets you see data associated with your account and control how that data is used. We believe it's set a high standard, and we are glad to see others now rolling out similar tools. And then there's our privacy policy, which uses simple language, videos, and graphics that users can easily understand and that help them navigate to the points that are most relevant to them. These efforts are not slogans. They're not just promises. They're practical tools that have worked for our users for years. And we continue to improve and expand upon them. Just today, we're launching new tools that make it easier to control and understand your data directly in the products you use every day. We're starting with our flagship product, Search. So right today, you will be able to right on the search page, review and delete your recent search activity, and get quick access to key privacy controls and more. We'll be expanding this service to other of our products in the near future. Beyond these tangible product improvements, we are deeply committed to the public discussion of critical issues facing us and to being accountable to our users and to the regulators in this room and around the world. That's why we work so hard to meet the requirements of the GDPR, building on years of earlier work. It's why we periodically talk about steps like the root and branch review we recently did of data sharing with developers via our API. This resulted in our creating more granular account permissions and limiting the scope of uses by developers. And that's why we support legal frameworks for data protection. Last month, we issued a set of legislative principles that we believe should guide future data protection laws and regulations in the United States and elsewhere. These principles drew on many of the principles found in European law, responsible data collection, transparency, control, and accountability. But of course, when it comes to privacy and security, the work doesn't end. We're here today to talk about digital ethics and the social and ethical questions posed by new technologies. So I want to close by talking about the complex relationship between society and technology and how law and policy can evolve along with them. We deeply believe in the potential of technology to, vent, to deliver benefits to humanity, all of humanity. Across the century, technology has been an essential driver of growth, development, and human progress. Of course, technology exists to serve people, not the other way around. We all share a moral duty, government regulators, civil society, companies, to try to solve the vast and very real challenges of our time. We think about this a lot, particularly with the advent of artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are opening up new avenues for progress across fields like addressing climate change, reducing poverty, combating disease, improving productivity, and many more. As just one example, last month we had an opportunity to speak at the UN General Assembly about a collaborative effort designed to help anticipate and address the continuing crisis of famine around the world. There are many other promising applications of AI and ML. It's critical that we develop and use these advanced technologies responsibly and wisely. That's why, as a company, we're committed to holding ourselves to a set of ethical principles that we announced this past summer. We publicly committed in great detail that first and foremost, 
AI should be developed and used in ways that benefit society. But beyond that broad promise, we have committed on our part that it should be, we should take care to avoid creating or reinforcing bias, that it should be built and tested for safety, that it should be accountable to people with appropriate human direction and control, that it should uphold standards of scientific excellence and rigor, it, that it should incorporate privacy by design principles, and that it should not be used for, for surveillance that violates human rights or to cause or facilitate harm. This is the ethical charter we have laid out for Google's work in AI and machine learning and in other advanced technologies. We believe it's a strong example of responsible technological development, and we hope it serves as a useful model in the ongoing discussion about techn technology, ethics, and society. I hope our comments today, Sundar's and mine, have given you a sense of our perspective on the complex ethical and social issues we face and for our ideals of how technology can benefit everyone around the world, no matter who or where they are. We recognize this as a critical discussion. And we know that given the scope of our efforts, sometimes we fall short of what others expect of us and of what we expect of ourselves, whether that's a bug in a product or a mistake in implementation. We welcome feedback and criticism that helps us get better, and we appreciate our continuing engagement with regulators and thought leaders like the ones represented in this room. We are committed to addressing the complex issues raised by technology and information while staying true to our core mission of creating tools that make the world's information universally accessible and useful, all the while respecting and protecting the privacy rights of, of our users around the world. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share a perspective with you today. Thank you very much, Kent. We have a number of questions that have come in. So one of the popular ones seems to be, does Google also support a comprehensive US federal data privacy law? Yes, we, we've been on record actually for some time calling for comprehensive privacy legislation in the United States uh, for some years. Our effort in the last month was designed to provide some more details as to how we think uh, the United States could best move forward in this area. Thank you. Um, how do you explain the contradiction between building a search engine for China that implements censorship while having the digital news initiative stressing that free flow of information is crucial for democracy? So we absolutely believe in, in the maximum amount of uh, information available to, to people around the world. Uh, and as noted in the question, we have worked with publishers and content creators to not only provide access to that information, but try to support the creators uh, of the, the information that makes for a rich and vibrant web. We, we have said that we are exploring the possibility of ways of engaging in China to see if there are ways to uh, follow that mission while complying uh, with laws in China. That's an exploratory project, and, and we are not in a position at this point to have an answer to the question yet, but we continue to work on it. I seem to have another long question. Not everything that is legally compliant and technically feasible is morally substantive. I think that's a quote from Giovanni. Anita Allen pointed out that individuals by nature pursue their self-interest. What is the incentive for Google to integrate ethics into its decision-making? We have a long-term perspective on the, the idea of user trust. Google became a successful search engine because people believed that by coming to our services, they could get high-quality, reliable, useful information. Uh, we take that obligation very seriously. As we try and work through um, the complex questions of, of balancing uh, the, the, the right approach to a number of these, these questions, we keep users front of mind. Uh, if we were to err on the side of favoring ourselves at the expense of users, I don't think we would be in, in business for the long term. We have a long term interest in getting this right. We heard from Apple and Facebook this morning, and we heard about the attention economy just before the coffee break. How does Google characterize its values? So we've talked about our values as being focused on the idea of, first, social benefit, 
when we talk about our AI principles, that underlines a lot of the work we have, uh, we are doing with regard to various advanced technologies. Uh, that is, that's a comprehensive view, not just of the benefits for our users, but the broader impacts of our technologies in society. And then when it comes to the day-to-day -day of what we do, of course, we go back to our mission statement that I cited at the end, the notion of making information universally accessible and useful. That continues to animate much of what we do. One final question. Google is a young company which has grown very quickly. Where will Google be in 20 years? Uh, if, if only I knew the answer to that question. We just celebrated our first 20th birthday, and it's perhaps like asking a 20-year-old what they'll be doing when they're 40. <laughs> uh, we, we are very excited about the new generations of technologies, as you heard, uh, the new classes of uh, algorithms and applications that are really just opening up. We feel that we're just at the first chapter of the information revolution, and we're very excited about the next steps. Kent Wilker, thank you very much. Thank you very much.